In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through setting up an OpenGL project in Visual Studio 2010. Realize that it's not that hard, but there are a couple of things that are tricky if you don't know where to find them. Also realize that there's a couple of different ways that you can do this so that you don't have to set it up each time. But instead, what I want you to do is for every OpenGL project that you create, you keep practicing until you become comfortable with it. Essentially what we're going to do here is to create a Hello World, but there's really not going to be anything to see. So let's go ahead and get started. You can come up here to File, New Project, and make sure that your language is correct. If you're coming from Visual C Sharp, you want to make sure that you select Visual C++ and select an empty project. After that, we'd want to give it a name. So we'll call this one Hello World, and then hit OK. And notice that it gives us our standard project hierarchy here. So to begin with, what I'm going to do is to right click on Source Files and say Add a New Item. In this case, we want a C++ file. And for simplicity, let's just go ahead and call this one main.cpp. Move over here and click Add. And to begin with, you can see that we have an empty file. So what I'm going to do is to paste in the minimal amount of code that you need for every OpenGL project that you're going to create. So I'll do that now. Now, notice a couple of things here. If we look at the top, you can see all of these pound includes that we've done are underlined in red. Similarly, you can also see that all of these calls to GL anything are underlined in red, and that's because it can't find these things. So right now, if we were to try to compile this, it clearly wouldn't compile. So the next thing that we need to do is to tell Visual Studio where these header files are. To do that, what I'm going to do is right click on the project, in this case, Hello World, and go to Properties. Now before anything, this is a step that you're going to easily forget. You'll want to come up here to this configuration and drop that down to all configurations instead of just debug. The reason is, is because this option allows all of these settings to be applied across debug and release and everything. So I'll select all configurations. All right, now the header files are found here under the C++ option and I'll click general. And then right at the top of this, you can see additional include directories. So if I should be able to click here, and I'll drop this down and select Edit. Now what you see here is one of Microsoft's most confusing interfaces. To be able to edit this, you have to click inside this text box and it pulls up this extra feature here. And so we'll click on the Browse button. And at this point, we have to browse to where Glue and FreeGlut are. So on my computer, they're here under the C drive. I have a dev directory, OpenGL. You can see I have a couple different versions of Glue, so I'll use the 1.7 version. And then inside each one of these, you'll see an include and a bin and a lib. So we're going to use the include directory right here and select folder. And at this point, you can see that it updates this path inside the text field. We'll do the same thing for FreeGlut, doing that right here. Click Browse. Go back to the dev directory, OpenGL. Go to FreeGlut. And it too also has a bin, include, and lib. So we'll select the include, select folder, and we're done. The next thing that we have to do is to tell Visual Studio where the lib files are. So that's going to be found under linker, so we'll drop that open. And to begin with, I'm going to select which libs that we want to include. So if I click on input, I can come up here to additional dependencies, drop that down and edit. And the two lib files that I want to include are glue32.lib, and I hit return, and also freeglut.lib, and I can click OK. So at this point, we've told it which of the lib files we want to include. And then the last step is I need to tell it where those lib files are located. So if I come here under General, under the linker option, you should see that there's an additional library directories right here. So we can click this, edit it. And then what I'll do is I'll browse again. Go here to the C drive, dev, OpenGL. And I'll select glue first, go to the lib directory, and that's good enough. Select that folder, and then do the same thing for freeglut. OpenGL, freeglut, and lib. Say OK, and then once we've done that, we can hit the apply button. And at this point, we could go ahead and try to run it, at which point we get an error that says that it can't find one of the functions inside one of the DLLs. So let's say OK to that. And the problem is, is that it just can't find the DLL. 
And we can handle this one of two different ways. We can copy the DLLs over into Windows System 32, and the reason is, is because Windows knows where that directory is, or we can copy the DLLs into the same location as our executable. So to do that, you can see here's our Hello World folder. I'll go into Debug, because that's where our Hello World executable is. Go here to Free Glut, and then Bin is where the DLLs are located. So I'll copy this and paste it here. I'll go back here to Glue 1.7, go to the Bin directory. You can see we have a couple of DLLs here. I'll just choose Glue32.dll and paste it. And at this point, I should be able to run it again. And there you go. We have our first OpenGL program that really doesn't do anything. So that's it for now. Hopefully you understand a little bit more about configuring Visual Studio 2010 for working with libs and header files.